College the seventh overall pick in the 1989 draft out of Florida State picked by the Pacers McLeod had gone through some tough times in his life both his parents passed away three years ago and McLeod had to deal with that and has been able to bounce back with the Mavericks Glenn Rice of the Charlotte Hornets part of a mega trade with the Miami Heat Alonzo Mourning going to Miami Rice and Matt Geiger now wearing Hornet uniforms Rice in his seventh season a 22 point score he'll be challenged by Hubert Davis of the New York Knicks another North Carolina product nephew of former NBA star Walter Davis in his fourth NBA season Davis six foot five 183 pounds 25 years old and a great outside shot. He's the tallest competitor tonight. 29 years old in his seventh NBA season. He's added that three point dimension to his game over the last couple of seasons and has really developed into one of the top threats from beyond the arc. You just saw the tallest man in the competition. Here's the smallest man, Dana Barrows, five foot 11, making his fourth appearance in the AT&T shootout. Finished second in the 1994 competition behind Mark Price, now with the Washington Bullets. Also holds the NBA record for most consecutive games with at least one three-pointer, 89 in a row. Steve Kerr, his third appearance in the AT&T shootout. And some of the All-Stars getting a glimpse of the festivities over All-Star Weekend. Jason Kidd starting point guard for the Western Conference. Terrell Brandon of the Cleveland Cavaliers. He'll be coming off the bench for the Eastern Conference. Brandon making his first All-Star appearance and really savoring the moment. He'll want to relive it over and over again for the Miami Heat. Was such a popular player in the South Florida area. And the Heat really didn't want to give him up in the Alonzo Mourning deal, but they were forced to because to get quality in this league, you have to give up quality. Currently ranks ninth in the NBA in scoring at 23 points per game, 12th in three-point accuracy. Just a growing improvement. Here are the contestants. McLeod, Lakler, Clifford Robinson, Dennis Scott, Dana Barrow, Steve Kerr, Hubert Davis, and your defending champion, Glenn Rice. Maurice Lucas, former NBA star with the Portland Trailblazers, taking in the action here at All-Star Weekend. Dana Barrows has to be considered one of the favorites. Barrows is deadly from downtown. We're getting you ready for the AT&T shootout. Not only basketball players on hand, Reggie Jackson, a Hall of Famer in Cooperstown, Major League Baseball. Grant Hill enjoying himself, and why not? He had a tremendous first half of the season, and the Pistons are one of the most improved teams in the NBA. Well, not just yet. The slam dunk competition, sponsored by Nestle Crunch, will be coming up later on 35,500 fans on hand tonight you'll see the same number for All-Star Sunday when the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference do battle the best players in the world here at All-Star Weekend in San Antonio Texas Shaquille O'Neal will be observing the AT&T shootout we're getting set for the action. Glenn Rice will try and defend his title. Let's go to PA announcer Stan Kelly. Shootout. An excellent inside player whose three-point ability has made him nearly unstoppable this season from the Portland Trail Blazers, Clifford Robinson. This sharp shooting guard has led his team in three-point accuracy last year and is among the best again this season from the New York Knicks, Hubert Davis. One of the great 
success stories in the NBA after spending six years in the CBA. He's found a home behind the three-point line for the Washington Bullets, Tim Legler. He's tied an NBA record by making 10 threes in one game, and he's already made more threes than all of last season from the Dallas Mavericks, George McLeod. He's the most accurate three-point shooter in the NBA history and ranks near the top of the league again this year. Back for his third time from the Chicago Bulls, Steve Kerr. This swing man has made his team one of the most complete offensive units in the league, making his second appearance in the shootout from the Orlando Magic, Dennis Scott. He has set an NBA record by making at least one three-pointer in 89 straight games, returning for his fourth appearance at the AT&T shootout from the Boston Celtics, Dana Barrows. This season, he's already made more than 100 three-pointers, defending the title he won last year in Phoenix from the Charlotte Hornets, Glenn Rice. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 1996 AT&T Shootout contestants. Yeah. We have met the eight contestants, and here are the shootout rules. We'll have three rounds, each scored separately. And in the first round, the top four scorers advance, and in the second round, the top two advance to the finals. There are five racks and five balls per rack. You get one point for the normal basketball and two points for the money ball. It used to be a red, white, and blue ball, but they've done away with that. It's turquoise, white, and black. That's the money ball, and that's worth two points. And, of course, you can get as many shots off as you can in 60 seconds. A total of $42,000 in prize money with first place getting $20,000. I know Tim Legler could use that. He has been a much-traveled uh, performer. As this is his sixth team, and he is going to be part of the first group that's going to be shooting in this uh, competition. And uh, first, let's take a look at George McLeod of the Dallas Mavericks, who tied an NBA record this year by with 10 three-point field goals against the Phoenix Suns in December. Had a big game, 33 points in his last outing before this All-Star weekend. So George McLeod will be starting from the left and on the right Tim Legler of the Washington Bullets who leads the NBA with a nearly a 52 percent. That's amazing Danny. A yeah, three he, point percentage. Yeah he's been a huge Our boost for the Washington Bullets coming off the bench and particularly hitting the threes. So they're ready to go. A little tension in these people as well I'm sure you've been there. No question. Legler's had some experience though. He won the three point shoot out of the CBA and he's shooting for his new baby who was induced on February 1st and wanted me to be sure to say hi to Jennifer and Lauren at home who couldn't be here. Well McLeod he said he wanted to really take his time because earlier when he was working out at it that he took too much time and he wanted to make sure that at the end of his racks he had time to go. Legler hits the money ball. That's a big one. Legler's in a great rhythm. McLeod, he needs this when he got the money ball. McLeod in his favorite spot, the wing area is the one he wants to can. Right now, he's not doing so well in that one spot. And this is a big one for him. Oh, yeah. And six in a row for Legler. Remember the record is 19 by Craig Hodges. Legler is not as comfortable shooting from the left side as he is from the right. So this is not comfortable for him, although he hits the money ball. Legler defeats George McLeod with those of unofficial scores to advance. Perhaps we'll see what the others do, but I'll tell you, 23 points. That's more than anyone got last year in the first round, and Legler hit all five money balls. Well, you know, they said that 15 points in the first round last year was a good round, but now that the line is closer, it makes it a lot easier, doesn't it, Danny? Absolutely, and last year it wasn't indicative in the scores, but I think it will be this year. Legler had two long streaks right there. He had five in a row and then six in a row. McLeod gave it a little rally there for a while, right? He was shooting it well. This was a good spot for him, top of the key. But when he went to the money ball, he nailed this one. But this is the spot that he really had a problem with, the wing. And he told me earlier that that's where he wanted to nail him. Well, last year they moved the line into 22 feet all the way around. But no one managed to get 20 points in the first round. But a very good performance by Legler, 23, McLeod 18. And, of course, both could very well still be alive because we still have six shooters to go. Here's Clifford Robinson. 6'2", 
6'10". He's got to be one of the tallest, I think, ever to compete in this. Detlef Shrimp right about that time. Second most three-point field goals, however, in the NBA, going against Dennis Scott, who has the most in the league. Well, this could be a key. Remember this, that Legler had made 23. Now, the first and second guys, if they get real good scores, could end up having to wait an awful long time before they shoot again. Could really pay dividends for him at the end. Dennis Scott, who has made at least one three-pointer for a franchise record 51 consecutive games. Robinson will start from the left corner of the court and Dennis Scott from the right. Dennis Scott told me that he was better suited for this last year. This year he's been trying to work on just being an all-around player. Now they wanted to be in a three-point shoot contest. It's important in the first back. He said the key was to get three out of five. And he didn't get three out of five, but he did hit the money ball. Now Cliff is changing his style. He's going to a set shot. He's particularly a jump shooter. But you know, Cliff Robinson, I think he belonged in the All-Star game this year. He has a pretty good attitude just to be here and participate in the three-point shootout. He wants to beat Clyde and Michael Jordan's all-time lows. That was his main goal. <laughs> I talked to Dennis Scott. He said that, yeah, I'm going to tell you something. Everybody thinks he's a lot of fun, but I want to win this. He said, this is not a lot. This is going to be fun for me if I can walk up to him after and say thanks for the paycheck. He's hit three <laughs> money balls. Dennis Scott has. Legler hit all five. Uh, that's what's hurting Cliff right now. He's been able to hit a lot of shots, but he has not been able to convert on the money ball. Dennis Scott is in a massive rhythm over here, hitting almost all five balls and the money ball. It's a seven in a row. Eight. Oh, my. And the money ball. Dennis Scott and Clifford Robinson just said what am I going to do against this guy an easy win and remember they're not going head to head but Clifford Robinson does not walk off as if he is going to last into the semifinals no he definitely won with an 11 score but, <laughs> but Cliff did pretty well he's not as pure a shooter as a lot of these guys Cliff is a very versatile all-around basketball player Dennis Scott right here was in an incredible rhythm he hit all five of these balls and the money ball and then went over and hit three or four more Cliff hit all the other balls, shot the regular balls pretty well, but he did not convert on any of the money balls, and that cost him in the final run. I think the key for Dennis Scott in this is he was really working. He said, I worked hard at this. Last time I came and played in this, I just came and did it. This time I worked at it. I worked on shooting from the left to the right. Here are the standings so far. Legler with 23. Dennis Scott with 19, George McLeod with 18, and Clifford Robinson with 11, with still four more shooters to go. Here is Dana Barros, who finished second two years ago behind Mark Price. This is his fourth appearance, representing the Boston Celtics, and a lot of people think this guy has a great shot. Steve Kerr, who's third in the league right now, holds the NBA career record for the highest three-point shooting percentage. Kerr will start from the right side of the court and barrels from the left. I think uh, Steve Kerr's got a great opportunity here because this is his third try. And you know when a guy doesn't make it the first two times, he's really worked hard at it. He's hungry. He is very hungry. As a matter of fact, I saw him in Chicago with the ball of racks out working on his game. He said on a 10-day road trip, he had four solid days of three times a day working on this game. Dana Barrels is red hot. Dana Barrels is a great shooter, and he, he holds the NCAA record for both threes in a consecutive game and the NBA record, so you know he practices a lot of three-pointers. Kerr hits the money ball, however, to climb back in. Kerr said the top of the key was his favorite spot. He's not done well from up there, but he's got it a chance to hit the money ball, and this is still makes it big for him. Yes. Dana Barrels is on a good roll, too. He just hit the money ball. He needs to have a strong finish here. This is a great battle going on right now. And see, right here toward the end is when your arms start getting a little bit tired, you may not be getting as much grip. And it's important to really concentrate. It's going to be tough for these guys to shoot jump shots to get all the balls done, to get all the balls off here. Well, Steve Kerr said he didn't care if he didn't get them all. He just wanted to make the ones he shot. And Kerr, who made four money balls, misses the last one. Had a chance to go ahead. He oh. might have rushed that. There's a guy that uh, is enjoying it, Isaiah Thomas, the boss man of the Toronto Raptors. Steve Kerr had four money balls and ended up with 18 points. But Dana Barrows, this was the best head-to-head -head we've had thus far. Yeah, you're talking about two great shooters. And Dana, 18 should be good enough, Dick. 15 in the past has always gotten guys into the finals, but 18 should get them in. But there's still two great shooters to come. They had to surpass 11. That was the total by Clifford Robinson, and both did. Steve Kerr had a nice rhythm going. He didn't make uh, the money ball on that particular shot, but look at him. 
He, he's one of the guys that looks at the rack. Some guys like to keep their eye on the rim, but Steve Kerr takes his focus off the rack, onto the rim, and back and forth. So 18 points apiece for Barros and Kerr. So you have now Legler, Scott, Barros, Kerr, and McLeod, a three-way tie. So something's got to give here as Hubert Davis of the New York Knicks who is really developing and of course the Knicks using him more as an outside shooter he's second in the league one of only two for over 50 percent and there of course the defending champion Glenn Rice who beat Reggie Miller by ooh, one point 17 to 16 in the final round last year Dick Glenn Rice was so smooth in the locker room before the shooting contest he, he says Reggie it's all about rhythm if I get in the rhythm I'm gonna make a ball Hubert Davis is a jump shooter and it takes him a little bit longer. We'll see how he finishes on the last rack, but he has really been hot in the last week of the season. Glenn Rice got a donut in the first rack, but he's warmed up. That's three. Okay, he's got it going again. Okay, made the money ball that time. Now Rice looks like he's getting in gear. Well, you know, he shoots a soft shot, so he always has a chance for it to fall in if it hits the rim. Oh, would Danny love to be out here? Right? Oh, I would love it right now. But Hubert Davis, these guys will put my score to shame. <laughs> Hubert Davis is shooting real well. But Danny, I put your score to shame this morning. <laughs> now, guys, 18 to avoid elimination. That's what these two, Davis and the defending champion, Glenn Rice. Remember, this has been a contest of streak shooters through the year. Right now, Hubert Davis needs to make the money ball. He's out. and Rice with unofficial 17. So neither one of them will advance to the semifinals. And you know, you can tell this year, finally that shorter line, Dick, is coming into play. The scores are a lot higher than they've ever been in the history. Well, Glenn Rice said he wanted to get in the rhythm, and he started off slow. He ended fast. This is a great round for him on this rack, but the first two racks really killed him. Hubert shot pretty consistently all the way around. He needed to hit that money ball, though. It was a good performance. One shot made the difference. If this goes down, he makes it. Otherwise, that's the million dollar shot, Reggie. D Danny, I think that the guys that are jump shot shooters are at a total disadvantage at this. Oh, yeah, this is not real basketball. So here we go. Everyone who had the 18, the three way tie for 18 all advanced. Legler had the most with 23. And Dennis Scott, 19. McLeod, Barros, and Steve Kerr with 18. And uh, four will advance. And we will have a shootout here with McLeod and Barris and then Kerr will go. So we had a three way tie for 18 and someone's going to have to lose out 24 second tiebreaker. I have to think if George McLeod gets into the later rounds he has an advantage because if you're watching he doesn't leave the ground when he shoots he's an arm shooter and set shot shooter so I think those guys have the biggest advantage like Danny said this is not real basketball. Well, you know one thing, we're going to have a new champion this year because uh, Glenn Rice did not survive the first round. Oh, air ball the first one to McLeod. It's different when the clock's running down, isn't it? <laughs> especially after you just shot, fatigue could come into play here, especially for Barrow. He is really struggling right now, and you got to think that fatigue, Reggie, he just hasn't had time to come back. You know, George McLeod can get it going. He's hit 10 in a row in one game, uh, and he can put it down if he gets in a rhythm. And George McLeod has advanced it, and will go against Kerr now, so the total for McLeod was seven, and Kerr will go solo from the right side of the court. Well, I think that's really tough. When you're going solo, you have nobody over there shooting against. But the good thing, Reggie, he only has to make four to advance. Yeah, so that's, true. that's all he wants to do. Matter of fact, if he makes four, he might as well just quit and save his energy for the next round. Good idea. McLeod with seven is in. So Legler, Scott, and McLeod. Kerr needs four to pass Barros and become the final semifinalist. This is big for him after having three tries. This is a, this is a great opportunity for him. I don't think there's any question he'll do it. He's halfway there. This will do it. This One do more. It. Hello. Okay, rest. Just rest, Steve. He doesn't need any more. Take your time. 
Maybe he's practicing for the next round. It's well, be well, you know, I think that someone should have probably told him, you know, maybe he needs a coach of his own. Because that's a part of the strategy. Well, he really slowed down. He knew what he was doing okay. out there. He ended up with eight points. Dikembe Mutombo on hand, checking the scoreboard. So, Tim Legler with 23. Dennis Scott with 19. Steve Kerr with 18 and McLeod with 18 both advance after there was a three way tie for the final spot. They'll go on. Craig Hodges at 25 in the first round back in 1986. So pretty good performance by Legler and we said $20,000 would come in handy for him if he can win it all would it? Oh absolutely and he was consistent in every rack. He consistently shot well. There's not a weak spot that he has on the floor so the, I expect him to do well in the second round. You know he's a guy that even in the season doesn't shoot a lot of three pointers but is deadly from back there. Nice shot too, just so rhythmatic. Oh, he's got a beautiful stroke. Off to a good start. That's the one he needed right there. You notice how he shoots on the left side of the racks on the on the corner, and then he moves to the right side of the rack on the wing. So you can tell he's got a routine down. But just check the rhythm out. It's almost if you're counting, you can count the seconds in between each time. It's about one and a half counts between each ball. Hey, and Dick, don't think that these guys aren't looking over on the side of the floor, the other guys in the competition, being a little bit intimidated by Legler's hot shooting right now. And they're over there going, oh no, it could be over, guys. Legler is eight for eight in money ball so far. Can he make it nine? No. But he's got a pretty good total going. Well, he's had a tremendous opportunity coming from the CBA all the years that he's played there and now tearing up the end. This is big. Yeah. He has missed a lot. One money ball in two rounds and a total of 22 points for Tim Legler. Huge. Huge shooting. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, his teammate, Jawan Howard. Is pretty happy. I don't know who's happier. His <laughs> wife at home for that $20,000 inducement or Jawan Howard. That's a major league shopping spree. <laughs> right now, let's go to Cheryl. Tim, calm, cool, collected. I mean, no smiles, no frills. You come out here, you shoot 23 your first round, two off the record. You come out here, you're not feeling any pressure whatsoever. You know, it's funny. I, I felt kind of tight before the competition, but as soon as you put the uni on, everything goes away. You know, it's just you and the rim. So luckily, I had two good rounds. I, you know, hopefully I can have one more good one. All right, keep it going. Thanks. Dick? All right, so Dennis Scott has his work cut out for him. He has the most three-point field goals. And he had a total of 19 points. So I'll tell you, Legler off to a hot start. Two off the best score in the first round. The highest score in the semifinals was also Craig Hodges with 24, and he had 22. So Legler right on the line with some of the best we've seen. Dennis Scott is really looking to make three out of five balls in this corner. He said the corner shots are his best shot. It's the same shot in the game for me. That's the way I want to shoot it. Well, this guy's as streaky a shooter as you can play against in the NBA. He made nine in a row in this competition before. I've seen him make nine in a row in games, too. So he needs to get on a roll. And also, he won, he's been practicing picking the balls up from the left to the right. You saw as he came to that rack how he went around to the opposite side. He's been working on this. He wants to win this. Fortunately, he's hitting those money balls. That's keeping him in the competition to this point. His well, teammate at Orlando, Nick Anderson, was in the competition last year. Two of them are the best tandem in the league at this. And Nick Anderson grabbed me from the sideline. He was in the stands. He said, Brett, i got to come to the sideline so I can support my man. And he's over there in the corner right now, yelling at him. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, was, that was huge. Oh, now, see, he's, he's to the other side. He's shooting behind he's the backboard. Behind the backboard. That's a horse shot. You got to call that, baby. You got to call this money ball. Oh, that's the second round. He missed that last money ball. And 19 that's points. Right. There's his teammate, teammates, points. Penny and Shaq. You know what Dennis Scott needs to do on that last rack? He shoots the ball really well from the top of the key. He always has. But in that corner shot, Reggie, he needs to move the back, the yeah. rack closer to the court so he doesn't have to shoot from behind the back. Well, you guys work with him tomorrow morning, okay, for next year's <laughs> competition. And the reaction from Penny Hardaway and Shaquille O'Neal at one point, Dennis Scott hit 11 out of 12 shots and winds up with 19, the same total he had in the first round. Of course, each round is decided separately.
I think 19 is a solid number. I'm not sure, but 19 definitely a solid number in this competition. It certainly puts the pressure on Kerr and McLeod. So here is George McLeod, who had 18 and won in a tiebreaker as uh, three shooters had a total of 18 in the first round. Let's see how McLeod of the Dallas Mavericks does. Here's a guy you know can get into a rhythm. Barely leaves the ground when he shoots the ball. Again, another person who likes to go from the right to the left, moving around the basket to get to the ball. But Reggie, yesterday in the competition between you and I, I did a lot better that way too. I actually beat you going that way. No, you didn't, Danny. <laughs> 19 to avoid elimination. That's what's staring in George McLeod's face right now. He said that he, the key for him was really to take my time. He said, if I make the balls, fine. If I leave one, fine. Remember, he already had to shoot an extra round. He's got to have that. But see, right there, that ball was a little short. Yeah, he can't win, Reggie. He can't win right now. He missed two money balls, and that hurt him. Plus, Danny, a couple of shots went in and out. He didn't get the break on a few. It's an impressive performance. I mean, the guy shot well. I think he got a little tired. I, I felt that he was a little short. And because he's an arm shooter, that can happen to you. 17 points for George McLeod, and he's not going to make the cut. But you know what? It's not like he, this is a bad performance. 17 <laughs> in the history of this event is an excellent score. He doesn't need to be ashamed. That's good shooting out hey, there. Hey, Danny, you were standing in front of the line when we were warming up, and you didn't get 17. <laughs> so here are the standings. Tim Legler and Dennis Scott. McLeod with 17 will not advance, and now it depends on what Steve Kerr does. Now, Kerr also had to shoot an extra round in the tiebreaker, the 24 second when three shooters had 18. That was his total. He did pretty well in the second rack. Look, I don't really think that that, that tiebreaker one really makes a difference. They're only shooting like six balls. If they had to do a full 60 seconds, I think it would have made a difference. Kerr needs 19 to tie for second and 20 to qualify. That's what Steve Kerr of the Chicago Bulls faces, and of course throughout this year is a member of this fantastic team with only five losses. He's had a lot of pressure situations during the set. Oh, absolutely, and he gets as many wide open jump shots as anybody in the league <laughs> yeah, that's, with Jordan and Pippen. That's right, he should be really good because I have never seen him shoot one in anybody's face. <laughs> Needs to get off to a good start here, and he did. He got the first money ball. Now, if you notice, like, not like the other two shooters, Steve Kerr runs up on the same side of the rack and shoots from the, the, the left side of the rack instead of the right side. He's got kind of funny rotation, Reggie. He shoots the ball with a little bit of a twister effect. Not your conventional pure shooter stroke, but he sure can make them. But he shoots it high and soft. And That's I a big one. That has a, I think that has a big, big plus for him. If it hits the lip of the rim, it's definitely going to bounce in. That was a big money ball in that rack. Number three. This is a big one, too. Got to have it. He needed it. He can do it. Looks like he's rushing a little bit. He told oh. me he didn't want to rush. Got to make all of them. He's got to make this one. Got to make this one or it's done. not you should have saw Dennis Kira. look at Dennis Scott over there he's very happy he knew he was dead in the water if Kerr would have made that well Kerr right here he knows because of his style of juncture that he's got to rush it he knows he's got to hurry to get this money ball off and right here he hits the one he had to hit it's the next one he had to hit but the money ball he was rushing. does this count as a six loss for the Chicago Bulls <laughs> <laughs> again Dick I don't think that's a loss I mean that is good <laughs> good shooting here's Phil Jackson rooting his man on. <laughs> oh, great. so short. Let's go to Cheryl. Oh, that's great. I'm telling you something. You had your boy sweating some bullets over there. Came down to the last one. I know you were sweating some bullets oh, over here. I was sweating big bullets, Cheryl. And uh, it's my second time being in, and I finally get a chance to go for all the marbles. Hopefully, I can stay hot one more time. All right, bring it home. Have all a good right. one, man. So, Tim Legler and Dennis Scott have advanced to the finals of the at and shootout, and one of these shooters is going to come away with $20,000 first prize.
It is Tim Legler against Dennis Scott in the finals of the Nestle Crunch, or I should say AT&T shootout with $20,000 on the line to the winner of this one. Last year, a couple of great players went at it in the championship as well. Glenn Rice and Reggie Miller. The year before, it was Mark Price and Dana Barros. One of the great competitions of all time came in 1988 as Larry Bird battled Dale Ellis. This time around, it's Legler and Scott, and Steve Kerr will have to watch the final. 17 points, George McLeod with 17 as well. Legler, high man with 22. Scott came in second place with 19. Dana Barros was eliminated in the first round. Legler and Scott, you couldn't get two players who were any more different. Legler, purely a three-point shooter. Scott, who used to be strictly a perimeter player, has added to his game this season with the Orlando Magic. Scott now willing to drive to the lane, willing to post up players as well, and has become one of the major weapons for a team that is trying to go to the NBA Finals once again. Legler, we told you about the six NBA teams he's played with. Now in his sixth NBA season. Dana Barros, last year, thought he had a chance to win this competition, comes back for another year, but comes up short. It's Tim Legler against Dennis Scott, the finals of the AT&T shootout. Legler with 23 points in the first round, two points shy of a record, 22 points in the second round. That's a combined 45. That leads all competitors. Dennis Scott, very consistent thus far, 19 points in the first round, 19 points in the second round. I don't know if 19 points is going to be good enough to win this AT&T shootout. Tim Legler trying to follow in the footsteps of Glenn Rice, the 1995 AT&T champion. And we will have a new winner this year. Glenn Rice did not get past the first round, and Tim Legler who was with his sixth NBA team, played in the CBA, the USBL, the WBL, Alphabet Sauce, you name it. Here's the coin toss. Well, Legler wins the coin toss, Dick, and he elects to shoot first, which I think is great strategy because he's done so well shooting first in the first two rounds. But not only that, doesn't put any pressure on you. You don't have to sit there and watch this guy can all those shots, and, you, and, and your ball gets heavy after you see someone else shooting well. 22 points in the last round, 22 in the first. Pretty consistent. So Tim Legler. You know, the only thing, Reggie, is I think that if I was Dennis Scott, I would have made Legler since he chose to shoot first, shoot on the basket he had the shot on. He allowed to let Legler go ahead and shoot the basket that he's been tearing it up on. That's a very good point. There's no way. you got to always make the guy go the opposite way, huh? Legler in another rhythm. Oh, he finally missed the money ball. Now, this is where the ball start getting a little heavy. Knees start creaking a little bit. He's got it going, three in a row. He hit nine of his first 10 money balls. Not shooting nearly as well as he did the first two rounds, though. Dennis Scott could definitely be in the running here. And Dennis Scott is going to know what he has to do to win. That's the advantage he's going to have. Right, right. I don't know if he can put up a score of 20. I think that might be good enough. Big shot. He's got it. Well, the score of 20 is good, but Dennis Scott ball C2-1 Howard, he is his coach on the sideline. Tim Legler, who was 13 for 15 on the money balls. That's a tremendous achievement. That guy can shoot. I can't believe that guy has well, a the You know what, i tell you something else. <laughs> Anybody who's never shot one of these multicolored basketball, it takes, some, it takes some practice because when you hold the ball up over your head, your eyes automatically go up to the different colors. Hey, every NBA player that's watching this game right now, if they ever leave that guy open for a three-pointer, they should be taken right out of the game, Reggie. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> Tim Langley, 13 of 15 money balls, a total of 20. Now, here's a consistent three-point shooter. He went over the 20 mark in all three rounds. And that's never happened, has it? I don't believe so. No, I don't that's think that's ever happened. That's huge. So here are the numbers. He was uh, six points from the third rack, five from the fourth, and now Dennis Scott knows he needs 
at least 20. Sometimes you get what you ask for. Dennis Scott said, I want to win this. I want to go talk stuff. Now the pressure's on him. What you going to do, big fella? He's only missed two money balls in the first two rounds. What do you think, Reggie? Can he do it? I think he can do it. Will he do it? I think he will do it. I don't think he will. I say no. I say he can do it. I say he can't do it. <laughs> yes, he's still in it. He's got his rhythm. That money ball was big. He can get, he get these next three racks. He's in good shape. And you know he's a rhythm shooter. Oh, I don't know. But his fate is in his own hands, guys. What do you think? No, nope, I don't think he can do it. If he, well, if he makes them all. <laughs> oh, that's that might it. Have been it. That did him in, that middle rack. That's his, usually his best shot, too, the one from the top. Well, he won't get to go talk stuff. He won't get to, hey, hey guys, thanks for the check. <laughs> He's got the money ball, but it's too little too late. Tim Legler already celebrating over on the bench. He's going to get $20,000, and he's going to love every penny of it. Oh, yeah, that was Tom's present for his wife, huh? Yep. Damn. His wife had all oh, the over yeah. due so that Tim could come here to compete. The baby was born on February 1st, his wife, Jennifer. And how happy is Tim Legler and Jawan Howard, the Washington Bullets duo, as Tim Legler has won the 1996 AT&T shootout. It's so nice. It's apropos. New baby. Wife, Valentine's Day, what a present. 20 grand in my pocket. I'm going home. You know, that's just a lot of pressure <laughs> on Dennis Scott. You know, when a guy goes out and makes 20 and you have to go out there and make 20, that is a lot of pressure in that Danny, competition. Danny, I think the key was what you said earlier. He should have made Lego shoot to the other basket. I think that would have yes. been big. <laughs> grand. All right, Tim Legler is one. Rasheed Wallace at the winning basket in the rookie game. So far, a good day for the Bullets. It has become a reality for Tim Legler of the Washington Bullets. Who would have thought a year ago that this man would be standing as the 1996 AT&T shootout champion.